that we have almost wore that song out this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I think it was Friday night. I lost track about the sixth time she sang that. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has become our theme song for yes, this revival. Yes. We get so caught up in what's going on. We get so bombarded with the news. It's always bad. Right. That's right. You can't watch the stinking weather anymore. Nope. And we lose, we lose sight. We lose direction. Yes. Our, our compass gets off. And that's what revival is about. Right, right. Revival is getting back to, for you car guys, top dead center. Uh, yeah. Revival I forget now who said it is. Revival is a renewed love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Another man said revival is a renewed obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Jesus himself said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I, I'm fairly certain that most of us have not seen services like we've had this week, Why? this past week. Why? And it can make you nervous if you're not used to it. it. It takes us out of our comfort zone. We don't like to get out of our comfort zone. Right. What if somebody sees me and labels me a fanatic? Mm -hmm. Good. So what? Right. I would rather be known as a fanatic for the Lord Jesus Christ than anything else. Right. I mean, you you watch a stupid football game on TV and you don't see those folks sitting in the stand just set soaking sour. No, no, I don't know. If you go to the Colts game, you see that guy that paints himself blue and wears them goofball <laughs> costumes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let's not forget the, the foam finger. Right. Right. If you bring one of them cool things to church, I will take it away from you at the door and throw it away. That's all I'm going to say. I do, I do know of one church that they were having a special Super Bowl Sunday service, and somebody, a couple of the men, rushed the pastor and poured a uh, cooler ice water over his head. If they'd have lived through that, doing that to me, I'd have sent them to another church. You kill a man doing that. You're right. Stop his heart. Breathing to death. But why is it that we don't get excited anymore about what God's doing? Right. Sunday morning. Got to get up. Take my weekly bath. <laughs> and go to church. Instead, we should be waking up on Sunday morning and say, I cannot wait to get to church. I have the privilege to go to church this morning. Let's go. That's right. That's right. If somebody has to beg you to come to church, there's something wrong. Right. right. Just like all of those years doing what I do, it seems odd to me that guys didn't want to be at home with their wives or Wives didn't want to be home with their husbands. They didn't. 
They would work for multiple agencies just to make extra money. And I talked to some of them that just straight up said, I don't want to go home, so I work. Right. That's the testimony of a Christian who won't show up for church. Right. Take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. Somewhat familiar passage of scripture, if you've been around the church very long at all, when it comes to Bible time, somebody inevitably at least quotes 2 Chronicles 7.14, if not somebody preaches on 2 Chronicles 7.14, which tells us, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I mean, we want that. We want God to heal our land. It's the rest of that. Right. That is bothersome to us. But we're not going to look at that verse this morning. Look with me this morning in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 9. And the Bible tells us, and in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. Mm -hmm. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shown unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prosperously effected. Father, thank you for the privilege to be back this morning in your house. Now, Father, I pray that you would quiet our hearts and minds. Yes. Let us pay attention on purpose this morning. Precious Holy Ghost of God, I ask you to come and be our most welcome guest here this morning. Because it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need this morning. If, if you do not show up, then this is all in vain. Help me, I pray, to say exactly what you want me to say. Precious Holy Ghost of God, anoint me with that fresh oil that it takes to make preaching. Give me unction that I might function. Convict the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. If someone here this morning is lost without Christ, help them to run to the altar and be saved. And Father, if by chance one of your children this morning hears, become cold, indifferent, toward you, toward your word, toward the things of God, I pray that you warm their hearts and draw them back to you. Bless the reading of your word in this service, in Jesus' name, amen. God, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, is answering Solomon's prayer, but he answered it visually. I'm a visual kind of guy. I like to, I like to if you show me something, and then explain it six or eight times, and I'm on the way to getting it. The visual learners, that's what sticks with them. And, and God has visually given an answer to the prayers of Solomon. He sent fire and consumed the sacrifices that had been prepared, and after that fire consumed the sacrifices, the cloud of the glory of God appeared in the temple. Now, we are looking at the dedication of the temple here. Yep. David wanted to build it, but God said, mm -mm 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 -mm. no, no. Because David was a man of war and a man of blood. Yep. And so God did not allow him to build the temple. But he did allow him to accumulate 
many things that his son Solomon needed to build the temple. Okay. And so he did have a little bit of a hand in it, but God ultimately really used Solomon to build the temple. After the children of Israel had wandered in the desert all of those years, and the, the tabernacle, for lack of a better term, not to, uh, uh, not to uh, cheapen it, but the tabernacle was portable. It, 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 was, it, was a, it was the center of the worship of the nation of Israel. And when, when the glory of God lifted off the tabernacle, they packed it up and they were on the move. Now they were given a place to come and worship God that would not move. That's right. They built the temple. And man, we, we've all heard about Solomon's temple, one of the seven wonders of the world. And we won't get into all that, but we have before us the symbol for a sacrifice. That day, Solomon alone himself offered 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. Yes. I feel bad for the priests because they had to be overwhelmed. They weren't ready for that. How many of us today are ready to make sacrifice? Right. If we're going to have revival, we're going to have to sacrifice. That's right. We're going to have to sacrifice our time, our talents, our treasures, and all of those things. We're going to have to say, God, I want you more than anything that's right. Any less than that, and we're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. Solomon gave sacrificially. The people gave sacrificially. Yes. In praise, the priest and the Levite were playing their musical instruments in verse 6 of chapter 7. There were so many sacrifices that Solomon had to instruct them to make a special dedicated area in the courtyard to make these sacrifices. Yeah. Yes. And it, 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 it caught my attention that God, when they, when they put the sacrifices on the altar, that God sent fire and consumed the sacrifices. Uh -huh. There's also another account where God sent fire. Remember the prophet Elijah? Yeah. Right. Right. Elijah prayed 63 words and the fire of God fell, yes. consumed the sacrifice, consumed the altar, yes. consumed the water that was running around the altar. Yeah. Right? Lord. We talk about wanting to see God manifest his power and his presence. But are we willing to sacrifice? Oh, Lord, help us. I want to. I want to. I just want to look at some questions this morning. Let's look at some questions and let's relate these questions to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Mm -hmm. The first question I want to look at this morning is what is happening? Yeah. What is happening? Right. It's not just a meeting. Nope. Right. That's true. Brother Tilly's not just a messenger. No. Nope. He's not preaching just a message. That's right. Mm -hmm. oh. So what is happening? Look at verse 9 of chapter 7. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. Yeah. The solemn assembly is an assembly as in you're held in. It's a holiday. It's a celebration. A festive assembly. Right. I think that's why... That Miss Tara singing that song, Thank You Jesus for the Blood Applied, had like that quick become the theme song for our revival. Why? Because we're celebrating the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on my behalf and your behalf. Were it not for the shed blood of Christ, every single one of us would be dead and on our way to heaven. Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. That's what's happening here. That's right. People are finally getting themselves into a place where, hey, let's just worship and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. None, of, none of this, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thanks to Calvary. 
too late for that church. That's right. It's too late. The day is getting darker and darker and darker. Yes, it is. And God has given us a unique opportunity. That's what's happening at El Bethel Baptist Church. We have been gifted one more opportunity to meet with God in a very special and personal way. Yes. That's right. Yes. My wife and I have, have been in churches before where we absolutely had to draw on the line in the sand and say, bless the Lord. If nobody else in this church has revival, we are going to have revival. Right. Thank the Lord that this week there's other people that have bought into that vision yes. and they are doing everything that they can because they want to have revival. Yes. But do you? Yes. What's happening in your life? Am I so concerned about what's going on around me? Yeah, I understand, church. The bills have to be paid. Right. We have to eat. There, we, people we are, we have to care for. Yes. These things, life still goes on. Yes, it does. But let me tell you, it's high time that we decide that it's worth it. The price that we're going to pay right. to have what God has for us. That's what's happening. That's right. Is he worth it? Oh, yes. yes. Why, do you, why do you think fasting is so important? Fasting is important because you're saying, God, you mean more to me than sitting down and eating this big greasy cheeseburger, three orders of french fries, and a, a chocolate shake and a strawberry shake. Uh -huh. God, you are more important to me than my necessary food. Right. What he said. We've got to get to that place. Amen. And then you, you again, you drop, you, you go up to verse 14, and he says, if, if, it's conditional. We don't have to have this. We don't have to. But I don't want to be the one that grieves the precious Holy Ghost of God. Right. And he says, I'm out. Mm -hmm. That's why you see a lot of walking around up here. Uh -huh. Because as I'm walking, I'm praying. Right. Because I'm trying to get the mind of God. What do we do next? What do we do next? Right. If it wasn't so solemn and holy Friday night, it would have been funny. I looked at Brother Tilly and he's just like, and I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this we're not going to rush anything. No. <laughs> because we will grieve the Holy Ghost of God faster right. than anything by trying to push. An agenda. That's right. But what's going on? We're meeting with God. Amen. We're having a solemn assembly. Yes. Number two. Why is this happening? Oh yes, that's good. Why is this happening? Mm -hmm. The second part of verse nine. He says, "For they kept the dedication of the altar." seven days. There was a commitment. They had made a commitment. That word kept means to make or to manufacture, to do or to create. What's happening? Some people have made a decision to keep right. an appointment with God. Right. To dedicate their lives to him to spending time with him to worshiping him and do you think that god almighty sitting on his throne in heaven seeing his children worshiping him and going that's yeah, all right oh uh -huh. are you kidding right no way to uh to use a little bit of a Street lingo. He's all up in that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we've had the services we've had this week. Yes. Amen. Again, you can 
You can say I'm nuts, and I don't care. Tuesday night and Friday night, we felt the presence of God. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes, we did. I, Brother Tilly, and I both felt him blow across this platform. Oh, yes. In a tangible manner. Yes. Yes, sir. We've got to be careful. Yes, yeah. we do. Because we can quench it. Yes, we can. If we don't, if we're not, if we try to rush it, we can't do our own thing our own way. That's that's what's happening. And that's why it's happening. Yes. Because some people have made a commitment. Good. Not only do we see their commitment, but we see their character. He says they kept what? Their dedication. Amen. In other words, they consecrated. They set apart this because they wanted to be a part of it. Right. The old guys used to say, well, I want to get under the spout where the glory comes out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do too. But there's a price to pay. Right. To be there. Oh, yes. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Oh, we don't like to do that. Don't like to do that. Why do you think? So many church members won't go to the altar because they won't humble themselves. Right. Well, what will so and so think? Who cares? That's right. right. That's exactly right. Just because you go and bow the knee at an old fashioned altar doesn't mean that you're having problems. Mm. That's right. More than once, I saw people come to this altar this past week, tears in their eyes, rejoicing. Right. start singing thank you Jesus for the blood applied and the message of that song hits you and you come to realization that he did it for me right and it should make us want to run and thank him and praise him and I don't mean run laps around the church if the Holy Ghost moves you to do that help yourself have yeah. time yeah. if your flesh is moving you to do that don't do it right what's happening preacher Solomon assembly. Why is that happening? Because some people have paid the price. And I'm not here to toot my horn. But I will promise you this. I want this so bad that I have dedicated, I have set aside myself in certain times to pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not just to now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep, but to pray for revival. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Why do you think on Monday nights? I go to Crawfordsville. Yes, I love those folks, but it's it's a dedicated time where God's people go and seek His face and get away from the world, shut out all the distractions and everything that's going on. Why do you think that that Brother George and I have started meeting here on Thursday nights when he gets when he gets out of work? Because we want to see God do something in this church. We have a burden to see Him continue to work. Right? How do we express that to Him if we don't ever spend any time with Him begging Him to do it? Right? Jesus gave a parable of a woman who refused to, to leave a judge alone until he made a ruling about something that concerned her. And Jesus said that she got her answer because of her importunity. Right? That's a big, long word that just means she wasn't going to back up, pack up, slack up, or shut up until she got an answer. Yes. Amen. Right. That's right. That's right. Lord, would you do this? Nah, I knew you weren't going to. You think God's going to answer a, a, a prayers like that? No. And that is unfortunately how too many of God's people are praying. Right? I think he can. I know he can. But will he do it for me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, thank God. Faith is not believing that God can, but faith is believing that God will. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> so what's happening? We're having 
having a solemn assembly. Why is it happening? Because some are paying the price because we want to see it more than our necessary food. It's happening to us. Right. It's happening to us. Look at verse 10. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shown unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. It's happening to us. Yes, sir. Right? The three and twentieth day. Three weeks into the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents. Why? Because there's time to worship and there's time to work. Yes. That's right. They had worship, they dedicated the temple, they, they made sacrifice, and now it was time to get back to the nasty now and now and work. Yeah. Right. But I will promise you, when they went back home, they were never the same. That's right. Never the same. That's what concerns me about people who sit in church week after week after week after week. And no matter the gospel message, there is no change. Right. Lord help us. If there has been no change, there is no change. Right. Amen. I'm going to throw that thing out the door. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Paul tells us, therefore, because of, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I'm telling you, if you really, honestly have an experience with the God of heaven, you will be changed. Right. Yeah. And I don't mean just a little different. You will be forever changed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's happening to us. The second part of verse 10 tells us what? They were glad and merry in heart for the goodness of the Lord had showed unto David and Solomon and to Israel, his people. Yeah. If we would just simply be honest, we could not deny the reality that God is good to us. That's right. He gives us the air to breathe. He supplies our needs. He has provided salvation full, free, and forever. Yes. If anyone for the asking, all we have to do is receive it. But we run around here like we've been baptized in pickle juice and lost our best friend. Uh -huh. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Well, bless your heart. Yeah. Number four, and I'm done. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Verse 11. Then Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he prosperously effected. Mm -hmm. He finished. Yes, he did. Well, that's good. He finished. Right? Yes. Church is not how you start. It's all about how you finish. Yes. You've got to start. You've got to start somewhere. And there's no place like here, there's no time like now, to just start. Yes. Yes. Not only did Solomon start, but he finished. Thank God. We see his faithfulness. The second part of verse 11. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. What did he do? What did he finish? He finished everything. Yeah. He finished everything. Yes. Nothing was left undone. Yes, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. Mm -hmm. He wasn't too smart, but right. he was wise. Yeah, that's right. I mean, come on. 300 wives and 700 concubines? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Preach on there, brother. <clears throat> he finished. We see his faithfulness. Look at the last part of verse 11. And in his own house, he what? Prosperously effected. We see his fruit. Good, brother. <clears throat> his fruit. If you want to know what kind of a what kind of a person somebody is, look at the fruits of their life. Right. If you tell me, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. 
that I see you coming out of Eight Second Saloon down there off of Lindhurst. Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. You come out of there and you're not dragging somebody out with you by the nap of their neck. <clears throat> you weren't there to get anybody. It's always, it's always kind of funny, uncomfortable to go to the store on Sunday afternoon and see somebody that laid out of church on Sunday morning. Hey, how you doing? Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> hey, ain't time to pray. Look up at me. Yeah. He finished. Yes, he did. Prosperous, prosperously affected means literally forced entry, mm -hmm. cut through to succeed. <laughs> Solomon did not let up until he accomplished everything that God had called him to accomplish. Right. So what are we going to do, El Bethel? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray yes. and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, right. then when they have prosperously, prosperously affected, then will I hear from heaven who will forgive their sins Amen. and will heal their land. Right. We keep praying, God bless America. God bless America. God has blessed America until America has gone to sleep and right. has forgotten the blessings of God. That's right. Yes, sir. We need to pray, God save America. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But we are going to have to get ourselves to a place where we are in a right relationship with him and God can hear and answer our prayer. Right. And it starts right here. Yes. That's true. We have that conditional promise. If God said, then Lord. Yes. Let's stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed.